Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we are going to move on to item seven, uh, public hearing. And we're going to begin the public hearing with a staff presentation from Director Vaughn. Welcome, Director Vaughn. Thank you, Mayor. And I'm going to buy our clerk just a minute to bring up my presentation. Thank you. And oh, yeah, that just clicked, literally. So walking into our budget presentation or our budget public hearing for this evening, we're going to quickly go over the public hearing, um, a quick overview. So quickly, I will go over a presentation of what's within our mayor's preliminary budget that's out on the website and for consumption. We, after my presentation, we will go with questions and comments from city council. And then we will, the third item will be that we will open the public hearing for citizen comments. And friendly reminder, again, uh, following public comments, it's three minutes. So every finance director's favorite topic, property tax levy, which is um, the 1% we refer to, the city adopts a property tax annually, and it is referred to as the property tax levy. Um, and that rate can be adjusted uh, through the council at the highest lawful limit, which is 1%. We call it a limit factor of 1% on the table. So you take your 2024 regular property tax levy, and then you increase it by 1%. That 1% has a value of just under $35,000. It's $34,736. There's a couple other components that add into your property tax, such as the new construction, relevy for prior year refunds. If there's any form of adjustments that took place in the prior year um, that came in after you adopted or whatnot, any type of adjustments gets included into that, that number, um, which creates a new subtotal. And then because we are asked to adopt this so early without final numbers being known, we estimate high in order to uh, basically tell King County the city's intent. That's telling King County that we are asking for our full allotted amount through the new construction if that number changes or any other number within this formula changes. So even though the city does adopt a biennial budget, with his, which is a two-year budget, so it's the plan for 2025 and 2026, the city can only adopt the property tax on an annual basis because it's projecting for the year forward. So we can build in our intent and then, um, but the city does have to act. Um, you can put those numbers within your budget with the projection of the intent, but it does, the actual action has to take place every single fall um, in order for the following year. So then going forward, uh, just again, a little table highlight of what you just saw on the previous slide, highlighting that 34,736. Again, the, the current levy rate for 2024 is the 0 0.80429, which is in blue, but it doesn't really show up that differently on this presentation, which is noted for next time. So I will choose a different color to make that highlight out a little better. Um, and then going down to the proposed levy rate for 2025, it's 0.7. So actually through that, you will see that the levy rate um, is going down. So is going uh, down. And these are again, estimated on preliminary ad adjustments. So the calculation, again, so anybody um, using, listening to this presentation or wanting the calculation is the assessed value divided by 1,000 times 
the, the actual levy rate. Um, so then if we walk to the, go to the next side, this is, and I am going to say a very simplified property tax breakdown. Uh, there are between each component, uh, as far as the, the city of Lake Forest Park, our piece of that pie, which is the star trying to highlight it, is 8% fires dis or fires portion um, is 7%. The library is three, schools have 62, and King County has 20. So again, I want to state this is, again, a very simplified. This isn't breaking out the difference between a levy rate versus um bonds that they have uh but in totality this is this is a, a very visual overview stating that when you pay your property taxes that the city of lake forest park is only receiving eight percent so then going into an overview of the general fund uh the city has some ongoing challenges that it seems like through every single year and every single budget season. Um, and I say that even on the mid by years, healthcare. Healthcare seems to be an ongoing uh, cost that is increasing. And this year it's increasing over 8%. Um, it, it's an ongoing challenge uh, and, and it affects um, every single employee that the city has. The municipal court, this is kind of, I'm just highlighting the, the one-offs, is proposing and requesting to bring in Laserfish, which is an electronic system in order to um, basically provide efficiencies within their department. So the goal is to make them paperless in order to get all of their uh, records electronically but it's a bigger vision for the city. It's not just for the municipal court. It sounds like that also could work for the, the city. So it's a bigger vision of a one-time purchase and an ongoing annual cost of helping the city move into the electronic um, and have everything to where it's, it's going towards paperless. As hard as that is for me to say, for those of you who really know me. And going down to the community partners, um, this is where we um, some the community partners came back uh, and asked um, at the beginning of August, those meetings are recorded. Please go back and listen to them. There's two separate meetings that were at the very beginning of August. And the community partners asked for some additional support, which was granted and put into the mayor's preliminary budget. So Shoreline, Lake Forest Park, the Senior Center asked for an additional, and I, I will highlight these are additional numbers. These are not the actual uh, total, and that number can be found in your budget, um, the total request, but it's an additional 20,000, 10,000 a year. Um, Shore Lake Arts asked for an additional 19,000. Third Place Commons asked for an additional 13,000. And then I broke this out because separately there's two community partners um, that are new that are requesting some, some funding. So uh, Shoreline Historical Society is an additional or is a requesting to follow the same format that they have for the city of Shoreline, which is asking the city over two years to pay for 19,200. Hope Stream is asking for 10,000 a year which this is a little bit in a category of its own. And I put it up there that these are restricted funds. So um, as you probably remember over the course, it's, it seems like it's been ongoing and um, our city administrator Hill has brought multiple uh, contracts forward for us to agree um, in order to receive as a city opioid funds, settlement funds, those funds are very, that revenue is very restricted and we can only spend it on items that directly combat that um, situation. And so uh, we, when she came forward, this is uh, a way in which uh, the city can, can use those funds that are highly restricted in order for their intent to be carried through. And then general fund, but general fund and just simply across the entire budget. 
I'm just going to say inflation costs, the cost of consultants, wages have gone up. Um, benefits are this insane thing as they're happening internally. I talked at the beginning of this healthcare costs, it's happening in the private sector too. And when we lean on some consultants for expertise, um, there it's it's showing up in their in their costs that they're asking us to pay supplies materials we've been talking about this for a couple years now and i will say within this budget of putting it together it, it the numbers are really actually reflecting on the increase so then budgeted positions there's the union, the guild union, guild, which we, we refer to as the guild negotiations, but most people um, just, just making sure that connection, the guild is a union that is directly and just for police. We are currently in negotiations for 2025 and 26. Um, Teamsters union, that is for our public works. So our maintenance workers, our leads, uh, those employees are part of the Teamsters Union, and we also are in negotiations for 2025 and 2026 um, for that union in addition. So when we refer to the, the Guild Union uh, or police, that is fully funded by the general fund. When we refer to the Teamsters Union, that's split for because it's associated with public works. So it's the general fund, it's the street fund, it's the transportation capital, it's the sewer and the surface water fund that's supporting uh, those employees. So then going down to the non-represented employees, that's covering um, market adjustments in order to stay in line with what's happening. Uh, and we do use studies in order to make those evaluations. And it's evaluated spe by specifically by position and title. And so it's it's not, they are definitely not across the board in any way, shape or form um, and very specifically um, evaluated in that manner. There is cost of living adjustments, um, which are um, modest at 3% built in for the non-represented. And then what's currently in the mayor's preliminary is to add a 0.8, it's a human resources specialist. It's very clearly defined and additional information you can find within uh, the mayor's preliminary budget. So then going into um, our current HR director has been trying to uh, um, evaluate to make sure that titles match the actual duties and job performance of what each employee is being asked to do within the city. So it it's it's basically truing up a job description to match so that we're actually truly comparing um, accurately and and have current uh, job descriptions that are reflecting what they do. Um, what each position does. So there's just basically some title changes. Um, so, and not necessarily associated, these are not like pay, there's no pay changes. And again, within um, the budget ordinance, the salaries are included within that. And you can go look at that detailed description if you would prefer. So again, the records management going to just list them, the records management and office support, walks into a public records specialist, a receptionist office clerk is now going to be called an administrative specialist. The passport clerk more accurately is called a passport acceptance agent. The environmental and sustainability specialist is going to now be called a community programs planner. We are adding within the salary schedule, you will see that there's an associate planner um, without an FTE increase, we also did something similar in the building department um, previously, not within this budget. And the goal with that is to make sure that we have levels of which we can hire and support and provide growth through a department that flows appropriately. We are not proposing to do any form of an additional FTE count. It just provides some additional movement 
internally, or if we found an excellent candidate in the future that you could, we, we have a little bit more, we have more options on our salary schedule already built in without asking for any type of FTE increase. And then the final one is the Lieutenant. The Lieutenant title needs to be moved to being called a division commander and this is being driven actually not internally. This is being driven by moving to NORCOM. So when dispatch goes out and the lieutenants are, you know, the chief is unavailable and they're looking for the second in line to make the call, they keep asking for a higher level position for our lieutenants. And they're like, we're it. <laughs> we're the decision makers if our chief isn't available. And so we're trying to basically comply with their needs and, and make that change to a division commander so that they understand that what the city of Lake Forest Park is defining as a lieutenant actually is the second in line. And so they give them that level of authority. I hope I said that accurately, <laughs> looking to the chief. <clears throat> so then going into the proposed sewer rates. So the proposed sewer rates, this is showing, and actually, actually we are asking to adopt um, through this or the resolution, excuse me, that's attached in this packet. We are asking to project and uh, adopt the 2025 and the 2026 rates um, because King County has also provided us with their rate increases for 2025 and 26. So they're proposing to increase their rates, um, the county, King County, which is why it's broken out into two pieces is King County directly, um, the city pays, it's a, almost a, a direct pass through for the wastewater treatment. The city of Lake Forest Park doesn't have a treatment plant. We send it to King County and they handle all of our waste treatment. Then there's the city por portion of the rate, which is the smaller portion, but that assists in all of our internal operations, infrastructure, staff, and all of the costs that go that are associated internally. So it's being proposed that um, county's portion is increasing at 5.75 in 2025 and 7% in 2026. The city is proposing to increase our internal rate, the smaller portion, at 5% in 25 and 26 in order to keep up uh, with the increasing costs. That in totality is um, an increase of 5% or excuse me, 5.5% in 2025 and 6.4% uh, in 26. And then the commercial and multifamily that's billed on that matches what they um, their water intake. So it's done a little bit differently um, versus the single family. So then what's being proposed is basically a monthly increase of $4.24 in 2025 and then $5.20 for 2026. Um, residents are billed on a bi-monthly basis. That means that their bill will be $161.48. And then we do, the city has a utility tax in addition, which is 6%. All of that is very publicly stated. Um, and so it's going to be 171.16. And so again, in 2026, walking through to 171.88, and then the amount with the utility tax. So then going to the proposed surface water rates, I want to very clearly publicly state this is probably, this is the only proposed known change from what is out in the preliminary budget. Um, so those numbers are going to change for what's being proposed in this ordinance and this public hearing here. What was proposed in the actual, because we have better information, I'll just state it. We have some additional better information. And so we are mindful that we think that we are able to satisfy what the city is asking to do um, and only increase the rate, uh, minimize the rate increase. So what's being proposed within the actual mayor's preliminary budget was an increase of a 20%, 10% to support operations and an additional 10% to um, support an additional position of which the city needs to hire in order to comply 
with all of the um, permit requirements and the ongoing obligations that the city has in order to stay in, in compliance with our surface water. Um, that being stated with additional information that has been received since our preliminary budget, um, we've had a previous meeting where we think that uh, we, we previously thought it would had to be hired at a much higher level. And now we've been informed that it's possible to not have that um, employee be hired at a senior project manager level, but more along the project manager level, which is a cost savings. So um, that is, I'm just fully highlighted change. The annual increase for the surface water rates is $40.63 for a single family residential increase. And again, this follows um, because the surface water rates for all residents that uh, live within the city of Lake Forest Park, um, it's included on the property tax and King County helps us uh, receipt that money, those finances. So again, that follows that same system. So even though the city adopts a biennial budget for two years, uh, it, it we the city will have to adopt the surface water rates similar to the way the city adopts property tax on an annual basis. And so then this um, chart, which is a little bit challenging, I would imagine to see from, from the seats, but it is provided in the packet. It walks through the 2024 rate. It shows the proposed increase of 15% and it shows the new increase for 2025 and then what it would be for 26 following that same format. Um, because if the city does hire and support an additional employee to um, maintain the requirements, permit requirements, and that but that will be a continued ongoing cost of that additional um, that additional rate increase, keeping that in mind. And then finally, our proposed 2025 user fee schedule. Every single year, the city evaluates, the user fee schedule um, with the budget uh, as, as part of to make sure that we, we are complying with and showing exactly what our intent is through the sewer rate increase for the surface water rate increase. And so the, the sewer rate increase is proposed between the King County's portion and the city of Lake Forest Park's portion at 5.5%. The surface water rate is 15%. The building fees are proposed to increase, and this is just a direct pass through. The rates are increasing um, from the International Code Council. They're proposing, and I met with our building official prior to his retirement. And um, so he, this was his recommendation was to just increase it exactly what they're increasing it, um, even though it is a small amount. Uh, it has definitely been this council's desire to make sure that um, we are making sure that our costs that we are incurring are being captured from our individuals that are building homes within our community so that we are um, paying for the services that we are providing. And then uh, the final one is notary services uh, that is being proposed to increase um, because of some cost changes associated with that, uh, an additional five dollars, excuse me, from ten dollars, moving it into fifteen dollars. And then at this, um, that actually pretty much concludes uh -huh. my overview. Are there any council uh, questions, comments, requests for clarification? Thank you, Director Vaughn. Colleagues, questions for Director Vaughn, Council Member Lebo. Thank you. Uh, Director Vaughn, could you sort of broadly describe the, um, the budget deficit in terms of the difference between our revenue and expenditures over the next two years? And what are the major drivers uh, we've talked a little about COVID and others, but really it's, if you would talk in broad terms, what are the major drivers for the budget deficit? Yes. And when uh, I say budget deficit, I'm referring to the difference between our anticipated revenue and our proposed expenditures. Um, absolutely. 
So there, there are a couple things. Um, our, the city has done, there have been since I've been here, which is a little over five years, constantly the city has had one-time funds um, that have assisted on the revenue side. Specifically in this, but I'm just going to make that statement for a prior comment. Within the 2023-24, the city received uh, ARPA funds, which were the additional um, funds, and that has assisted with, um, you know, we, we did support community partners with that, and it has supported us internally. Um, and we've paid for a lot of uh, incredible things out of those funds, which has increased on the revenue side, but they are one-time funds. They are one-time funds, one-time funds, one-time funds. The challenge is that our ongoing costs being salaries, benefits, um, and, and wages are continuing to increase at a pace that is not being met on the revenue side. When we're estimating our revenues, I'm estimating them very cautiously being sales tax, et cetera. And they're not increasing at the rate of which our expenditures, I don't have, there is not one revenue that's increasing at 8%. I can tell you that right now, but yet our expenses for our ongoing and our healthcare costs are increasing at that rate which we've, this has been an ongoing conversation and I feel like I'm constantly the bearer of bad news as the finance director, because I'm the one presenting all this information. But at a certain point, if if the money coming in is not paying for what's going out, it, it comes from your unallocated fund balance, which draws down your fund balance. And then you get into a situation where, I, I wanna be very careful here. You have your reserves and your minimums requirements, and then you have the Delta, and that's what I would define as your unallocated fund balance. So when we draw from that balance, we can only do that so many times before we are into our reserves. And once a city is into your reserves uh, of what they minimally define, and that's 16% based off of an annual and the way that our city does it is based off the revenue. Once you are into that category, it, uh, it's it's alarming. I'm just gonna say that. And so as we keep talking about the revenues and, um, and, and those versus the expenditures, we just are trying to avoid the, avoid that crossover and being so close that we we can't make adjustments in order to course correct. That's been the ongoing conversation and the ongoing challenge that we've continued to have. And I also wanna probably just take a minute to make note that as certain things come up and as I listen to continual conversations and comments on our budget, I constantly am, am hearing ways to be better on showing our information. I'm clear that our consolidated, when we, we talk about using the funds and the sub funds, and then I consolidate them and I show them in that manner, it's confusing, period. And so as we've previously talked behind, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, it's confusing. So we need to break it out. We need to very directly show what we call our true general fund and then the difference between our sub funds. And actually I will touch on that a little bit in our budget amendment conversation, um, which I didn't think to take that slide and just bring it into the public hearing uh, conversation, but here we are. So again, a note for possibly the next public hearing. So again, I just try to, to make notes to, to be better, to look at what we can do differently, how we can display the information differently. Um, and we do need to, on that consolidated uh, schedule, we do, do very clearly need to show the true, what we define as the true, true general fund, which is 001, and then all of the sub funds that on that schedule roll into that fund, okay. because it doesn't tell the true story through the numbers, and it is confusing. 
and we've had that conversation um and we're working i'm working i guess there's there's we when i'm down one in my team so it's a department it's me on this budget um working to to make those changes to make it more transparent and clearer um through some of the conversations that uh to, to be better and more clear and continue to try to take this, these conversations that take place in order to uh, more transparently show our information that um, we constantly have conversations and have been having conversations about since August, um, but make it as clear as possible through the document that's also being presented. Thank you. Thank you, Director Vaughn. I would also note too that public safety costs significant increases in uh, dispatch, significant increases in uh, insurance, insurance uh, jail, jail costs, costs have gone through the roof. Increases. Um, just for one brief example, our jail costs, I think it was in like 2020 or 2021 was like a hundred and just rough numbers. Don't quote me don't, because I'm sure I'm going to say this and we don't do math on TV, but here I go. It was about 131,000 and now it's just skyrocketed to where we're budgeting just shy of a million dollars for the next two years in jail costs. And so it's, we go from one year of having it to, I think it's 950,000 is what's being proposed. And I'm back to, we just don't have revenues that are coming in at that level of an increase. And I'm I'm open to hearing suggestions, being a partner, uh, getting clear on the way to show the financials, um, because I do see this. We're in this together. We're we're in this together. I you know, and if if we can come up with a a way, um, we just know the information. I think more intimately, and and as the director, I guess I listen to these conversations, and. I'm listening to them very loud and clear in the sense of how can I, how can we do better to show the information? Yes. In addition to that, the, the other component, the trifecta was uh, dispatch services, which went from 80,000 to 200. And I, I shouldn't do math on TV either, but it's, it's four X what it was basically pre, pre over previous years. Colleagues, other questions for director Bond. I'm sorry, council, we're good. <laughs> Should have moved closer to you. <laughs> can you uh, can you explain for our audience here? There are some required changes for for things that we didn't have before, and it's and it's causing us to look at having to hire another person. Can you explain that, and also maybe go over how many? additional employees that we've had in the last five years or eight years or appropriate number? So when you hear the city constantly say unfunded mandates, <laughs> that is a big broad over from it, not just one fund. So, uh, and specifically I will use surface water. We're asking for an additional employee within surface water because of requirements that the city is held to. Um, and we're not any different than this, the larger cities such as Bellevue and um, Kirkland. We have the, we are held to the same standard, the same requirements, except for with less operating revenue and dollars. And it leads to a big challenge. Um, and so we are trying to get, uh, we're trying to find ways to stay in compliance because that's one of the funds that the, the operating costs um, as far as um, maintenance operations has drastically increased. Um, and it's because of the requirements. And we've been, um, our previous senior project manager was, has been actually bringing it to council and has been talking, had been talking about it for a while saying these costs are just going up significantly at, you know, $150,000, $200,000. Like this is going to really hit. And we're starting to see those costs actually come through. And so that's the challenge of in within surface water, the unfunded mandates within police, our police chief 
just is not here. I was going to look to him, but again, we've got dispatch jail. Uh, that's not really police. That's more of like the court legislative. That's, that's, um, judicial. judicial. Thank you. Not legislative judicial side, um, that is driving that. Um, and so, but you know, just unfunded mandates as far as training requirements that we're asked to send our entire police force to, um, but then there's not additional support in order to asking for all of those additional requirements. Um, and so it leads to just flat a big challenge of where we're being constantly asked to increase our expenditures and meet this these requirements, these demands. And it's not just one fund, it's all the funds um, that it that it kind of plays into. Um, it just, and so it just, I don't know how else to say it besides the, the expenditures continue to increase at a level of which the revenues are not supporting. And that is the challenge. And, um, and then you get into the enterprise funds, which I, I'm not trying to, that's the sewer fund, the surface water fund. Technically, they are called that in my finance world. What that means to the average person, the general public, is that that rate that we bring in as a city has to support any expenditure and without waiver. It, it has to support the expenditures from the revenue that's coming in within that fund. And so what I define that as is a little business. It has to, the money coming in has to support the expenditures going out. Um, and other funds it, are a little bit different in that manner, but the enterprise funds are have to, the rate has to support the fund, which when you think about it, that does make sense. And then those funds are protected in the sense of you can't pay for, you can't ask for an additional sewer increase and then support it with streets. That's against the rules, which makes sense if you think about that. So that's, um, I'll just probably stop there. Thank you, Director Vaughn. Colleagues, other questions? I did look up the dispatch numbers, just under a million dollars. It's up 76%. Um, colleagues, uh, Council Member Riddle, I don't wanna miss you online. Did you have any questions for Director Vaughn before we open the public hearing? Thank you for checking in. No, I do not have any questions. Okay, thank you, colleagues. All right, thank you very much, Director Vaughn. Appreciate your, your presentation and your answering the questions. Uh, and with that, we will open the public hearing on the preliminary 2025-2026 biennial budget. Um, let's see, and I do not have the chief here. Matt, would you mind doing the honors? Thank you, sir. Or Lindsay, appreciate that. Um, and it's just as a reminder, same rules apply as public comments. You have three minutes to make your, your comments. Please, once again, this is our way here in this community to keep it civil, no name calling, and please do not use labels. Uh, unless they're post-it notes. Um, uh, let's see. First, Mr. Keeper, you're welcome to join us at the podium. Let's see. What? Okay, yes, you do want to uh, I don't think I need three minutes. It'll be, probably be pretty short. But, uh, you know, all my years in government, uh, it's all about priorities. You know, I like to know, you know, what the priorities are. Um. One thing that I always like to see when I was managing uh, a facility while working in the government, first thing I told accounting, let me see the profit and expense reports. I want to see who's spending money from my operation. And I want to see where my money is coming in. And that's something every one of you can do. You need to get those profit and expense reports and then apply priority to those. Uh, one concern I have is professional service contracts. Over the many years that I've been here, 
you guys really like those professional service contracts. I think you need to get a little more creative yourselves. Instead of hiring these people to do the work, maybe you guys need to do the work. You might learn something. Um, you know, when you have your, your propositions and everything, when they fail, you always seem to get the grant money. You know, it's, it's amazing. But I'd like to know how much grant money do you people get from King County, from the state, from the city of Seattle? How much grant money do you guys get? So I would like to see that on your profit and expense report. Okay, thank you. Hey, uh, next we have Jack Tonkin. Did you want, wish to speak again, Jack? Boy, I'm happy we're talking about this. <laughs> My favorite subject, the budget. Um, that was a lot of good information that we got. And I think uh, we could do more of it. Because certainly the public doesn't understand it. And I don't think you all understand it either. And so it's a lot of good work. We should do more of it. And in an open forum, where we're not limited to the death watch here of three minutes. Um, I think there's a, this is probably a good time to ask everyone, what are we doing about cutting costs? What do you think we can do? Do we just look for percents across the line with uh, the non-essentials? Do we try to look for things that uh, have been done to us with uh, consequences we didn't realize when we approve things. Case in point would be the water park. We bought that for $5 million and we're just, we were celebrating. And I don't think we had any idea at that time what we we're gonna do with it, except we got one. But you don't have a park, you have a piece of land. And then we started hearing about the consequences. How much is it going to cost to develop this property and make it a park? I don't know what the number is now, but I did hear about $8 million some time ago. Now, I just took a walk to the uh, Kenmore uh, Log Park this afternoon just for fun. That's a beautiful, beautiful park. I would encourage everybody here to take a walk through that. That's amazing what they did. Now, we're having situations with our park. For example, we don't have any parking. They have 49 stalls. We have none. Where's it going to go? Out here. And it's going to have an impact. The consequences of a decision made are just starting to come to light. Tonight, you're asked to approve another uh, consulting fee for what, traffic safety? Now, really, is there any bridge association here with getting to the water park? Could that be part of your agenda? I don't know, but it seems funny to me that we have finally decided to put a bridge across 522 when we've got this park that nobody can park in. So that's another consequence that you've got to deal with. Not You didn't do that, but now you've got to deal with it. We didn't do that. So it's not our problem. It's your problem. And what are you going to do about it? And that isn't the end of it. Now you're going to have a consultant do a lot of disclosures for you about what they want to do or you should do or can do for the park in a development. And where do you see that number? And did you know way back when it was approved for 5 million that we would have to spend two or three times that 
to get this thing resolved? And how many people are going to enjoy it? This is a very small parcel. Take a walk and see what Kenmore's got. You can access it right from uh, your foot traffic on the trail. You don't have to drive around and park. You can access it right there, which is close, very close in proximity. I don't think we should ever have done that without taking a walk down there and take a look at what is available to us for nothing instead of doing what we're going to have to do. So consequences are something that you need to look at when you say yay to a motion and you start committing yourself to the bucks. And I, I would encourage you to do more and more of the consequential thinking. And then what can you do to save money instead of how to spend money? You know how to do the former, but you got to work on the latter. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, let's see, Alan Keast. Again, Mr. Keese, welcome. Thank you, Alan Keese, resident of the city. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with the finance director who characterized the fiscal situation as alarming. Uh, let's go with that. Um, if the situation is alarming and to the extent that it is, um, the budget before the council doesn't correspond to that. In an alarming fiscal circumstance, would we be looking at a budget that is $3 million in the red over the next two years? Is that, do those two things go together? Uh, and, and that proposal before you does not address the wage increases for the two unions over the two year period of time. So the city council is gonna be set up to do budget amendments and spend further into the red when those wage increases come through. The preferred way to do that is to have a surplus and spend down the surplus when the wages come in. If we are in an alarming circumstance, it's surprising or dissonant to me to see that $690,000 is budgeted for non-mandatory culture and recreational services. These are not required by state law. These are not obligations of the city. And that includes the, the mayor's proposal to add a new non-mandatory group called the uh, Shoreline Historical Society, $19,200. Um, a community, a, uh, community events, now $40,000, a 46% increase in the Arts Council to $60,000 and $35,200 subsidy to the short on recreational program. Does that correspond to an alarming fiscal circumstance? At the same time in this budget, did you notice that the city will fail to spend $6 million of revenue? That's in the uh, transportation sa traffic safety realm. And it's indeed constricted by the state government. It's, it, there is a challenge there, but nonetheless, are these things going together? The traffic safety fund uh, should, the, we, the city should consult with the Association of Washington Cities to broaden the use of these funds. And if no way can be found, it should go to its legislative delegation and have the legislators uh, pass a broadening of it if, if, it, if it falls short. Uh, the police department camera reviewer, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get that and you'll see there's a struggle. Can we afford to have someone reviewing these, these traffic cameras? How do we deal with that? It's kind of unresolved in the budget. My suggestion is that that be fully funded by the safety fund. And that the uh, further, that the planner, that the, in the planning department, part or all of a planner be devoted to safety fund issues and funded by the safety fund signed a safety workload, including supervising the safety study of the transpo group, which is mentioned in the budget. And then evaluate further whether that we noticed that the mayor was not able to fund the e-bike officer. Well, we should evaluate whether the e-bike officer can be funded by the traffic safety fund. I don't see that that can't be done. That, that should be, so that helps us achieve our city objectives within the various constraints that you have to have to work with. But uh, we, there needs to be another glide path here. This, this budget does not correspond to the alarming fiscal circumstances that we have. And I urge the council to roll up its sleeves and bring those two things together. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Peace. Uh, we have no one else signed up to give public comment. Is there anyone else in the council chambers that would like to give public comment 
uh, regarding the proposed biennial budget. Sorry to lose my voice here, apologies. Okay, no one? All right, with that, we will close the public hearing. Um, and we have the opportunity to respond to a couple of questions that were um, asked. Uh, I can answer a couple of the questions Mr. Keese just raised. Uh, the question of the, the traffic uh, ticket reviewers is going to be funded on a provisional basis based upon the revenues that occur or don't occur uh, from the traffic safety cameras. Uh, additionally, the project manager for traffic uh, active mobility is contingent upon revenues or no revenues. So that is also fully funded. And um, I can also assure you all that I have spent tens of hours just in the last few weeks talking to legislative delegation about the actual uses that are appropriate for those funds because we believe they're very restricted. However, we have a compelling need for um, for safety improvements. So we will continue to explore those options and make sure that everything is on the table. Alan, I appreciate your, your comments. They're, th they're thoughtful. There was one other question. Uh, the other question to, I will, since I was originating these things, I will respond also to this. Uh, December 11th, uh, 2017, conversation with then Senator Frocht is where the origination of the overpass or underpass came about long before the Lakefront Park ever occurred. It's been something we've been discussing for decades here about pedestrian safety in this community. I know Ken Moore has done that as well. It was former Mayor Baker's dream to have a pedestrian overpass uh, in the town center area of, of Kenmore as well. And we've been talking about it for a very, very long time. So this is nothing that's predicated by the park. Um, be a good positive addition for community connections from the interurban trail, as well as to the, the Burke Inman trail, because, because right now, currently those are connected on surface streets with Sharrows. Director Vaughn, did you have any follow-ups that you wanted to share with us or quest? Uh, I just want to direct to page numbers even and have it on this recording so people can go directly to it. Out on the website, on the preliminary budget, you will see the projected uh, revenues for the traffic safety fund on page 32. And then there's an actual narrative and an expenditure overview um, on page 85 that directly breaks out what the city's intent um, is on that fund. And it's, it clearly um, basically states um, that it's going to pay for salaries for the court. And this is what we know as of now. Um, again, this is very new in um, its creation and that actually is later on the agenda. So um, that's in my next presentation. And so we have the, the court, um, police salaries, the tra traffic camera fees, um, which we have to pay, um, some professional services, which you'll see there's no, no line item there. And then the goal of using funds for the traffic calming as we've very publicly been stating. But there's the actual breakdown on the expenditure side and, and the revenue. And again, I will just use the very big uh, disclaimer in there that these are estimated numbers um, because we, we don't have, because it's so new and we're asking for the creation right now um, that there's always a disclaimer to be, to be very cautious on what that might look like um, because we don't have actual data, so. Thank you, Director Vaughn, and on point, I would just say that already um, in the period of time since we activated the new new cameras under the under the state's authority that was granted to us, um, courts and PD are also are are very busy to process those those citations. We expect the trend is going to continue, um, which is challenging because. Um, we were hoping people would slow down and there wouldn't be those kinds of situations, but the speed, average speed has gone from below 30, just below 32 miles an hour down to just above 24 miles an hour. So the success is in the numbers. It works. I don't care about the revenue. It, it Honestly, if it comes, it comes, but the reality is people are safer for it. And on point, the professional services agreement tonight 
uh, resolution 24, 1974, authorizing the mayor to sign a professional services agreement with Transpo Group is specifically about traffic safety and the addition of uh, whatever cameras that are authorized under state statute for our state routes, uh, in addition to some other components as well. Colleagues, any other questions or follow-ups so we can get these things out and not have them hanging over our heads? Yes, so customer good. Um, how many unfunded mandates have come down? I mean, we have, I mean, because people might not know. Uh, so that is a fantastic question. Because um, I think if we, if I, we identify, I, I'm yeah. looking to <laughs> city administrator Hill to, to help me. And I'm not sure that we could even say a number right out the gate but it seems to be ongoing. I, I know there have been, I mean, just for police alone, sorry, police department, but here we go. <laughs> uh, training, uh, just the requirements. Um, then for a while we were re uh, asked to pay for, I'm just giving, buying my city administrator a uh, minute of time. We were asked to pay for, um, I'm, Chief, I'm looking to you, the um, academy. We were asked to pay for the academy. Uh, and so these are things that previously have been paid for um, in support and that have changed. Uh, then we had the requirements for culverts. We've had, go ahead, training. I'll just jump in on a few items. And this is from a presentation later tonight. But as far as unfunded mandates, you know, if, if you look at it that way, the um, stormwater, um, NPDES, okay. National Pollution Discharge, and I can't remember the rest of it. But anyway, that is a federally handed down to the state, handed down to the county, handed down to the city, and we have to comply with those. That amount increases every year. Um, we pay hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in consultants to comply with that. It's going up another $55,000 next year as more federal regulations come down. Um, unfunded, you know, Bothell deciding no longer to do dispatch for the city. Um, and that went from, as the mayor mentioned earlier, $80,000 roughly a year mm -hmm. to $283,560 a year. Um, we've seen jail services go up three, four fold, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Public defenders, which were required to provide by law, we just this last year had to add an additional 30000 to cover that. And then just... Um, one I wanted to cover, um, we dealt with it in the 23-24 biennium where um, our Washington City Insurance Authority, and you've seen this in your own rates, 43% increase for auto physical damage, 28% for property damage, um, an impact of $109,000 a year. These are real dollars. They add up quickly. And when your revenues increase by a percent here and there, you can't keep up. Thank you, Administrator Hill. I would just say, uh, it, well, let me back up for a second. Any other questions or comments, colleagues? Actually, we're supposed to be addressing questions from the community to clarification. And one final clarification I would make is that I believe that many other jurisdictions too have been re have been relying on one-time funds, uh, REIT, real estate, real estate excise tax, ARPA funds, CARES funds from the federal government. As the, as the pandemic wound down, Many of the jurisdictions, including the county, found themselves in a place where they realized that their costs have increased dramatically and they're passing through for the rest of us. Surface water rates and those kinds of things, we have to charge what the services require us to, to, uh, to input into the system. And so similarly, from the sewer standpoint, it's a pass through directly. It is, it is increases in rates from the county. And I would say that there were a number of folks here on this dais that fought with the county over, I believe it was 20, um, is tw between 20 and 27% increase in the first year alone. And we were able to get them down to the place of out of the heart attack zone into a 5% per annum kind of increase, which is still very unpalatable for everyone. But it was an onerous lift that they were talking about putting on the backs of, of our citizens. So there's a lot here. And um, I think with that, 
Vice Chair Fertoni, please. One thing I would like to point out is we are not unique as a city in this regard. Many cities are having difficulties. In fact, I think it's fair to say almost all cities are having the same problems. Isn't that true? Uh, either Administrator Hill or Director oh, yeah. Bond? Yeah. Yes, I'm just going to state that, that this is, um, if you start paying attention to the news and start listening to what's going on at other cities, we are not unique um, in this sense that there are just some very big challenges. Uh, I think it's um, Edmonds uh, came out on the news saying that they've got some very big challenges. Uh, I just, I know Issaquah is looking to, I think, lay off 11 people. I just spoke directly this year. with this year. Yeah. So, the, yeah. um, and so when, when challenges, when, when expenditures, when the revenues are not supporting the expenditures and you start operating as lean as um, cities have become through the pandemic, any place there was to, uh, cut quote unquote it's been identified i'm just gonna say that it's been identified and it's been the belts have been tightened and it and that is why you're gonna start hearing that cities counties don't have any place else to go except for staff and that's the challenge i am going to also blanket statement say that that's not what this city is proposing we have some challenges yes we're acknowledging them very publicly, uh, but that is not what this city is proposing because we already operate on such a lean mm -hmm. FTE count full-time. I shouldn't do that. Sorry. <laughs> a, a very lean employee count. Um, we're already asking our staff to stretch in so many ways and, um, and, and do a very large bandwidth of work. And constantly, you, this city has an elite team. I'm just going to say it. We have a great staff. So, and the, the challenge is to, to keep them. And, um, and it's, it's hard. The leaner we get, the more that we ask them to do. And it's, it's a challenge just internally. So can I say one thing that pivots to maybe something kind of good? Because this is, I'm, right. I'm going to go right ahead. I'm going to pivot to one thing that makes me happy for that finance, I think, and the council and we have done acknowledging is that we did diversify our investments. We have done what we can do internally to ask our money to work for us. We have done some, um, made some differences. And if you look back at the interest numbers, I wanna just highlight that. It's the one thing that we do on the revenue side that actually has made a real difference through the financials on the revenue that hits absolutely every single fund that the city does have. Um, and so we've gotten creative. We've we've done what we can do. We've um, and so I just want to highlight that it's not that the city is in a position to where we're asking for more when we haven't tried to, we haven't, I should not use the word tried. We have looked at, evaluated, and implemented and are seeing the work from those changes on the revenue side. And so I just want to highlight that because prior to this budget um, and those changes, um, Th those interest numbers were were very, um, and that's due to the market and a lot of variable factors in addition. But I just want to highlight some of those in addition as a, because I do, it's some days harder than others, but I do try to find the good and the positive in situations. Thank you, Dr. Vaughn. A um, couple other things, and I will end this conversation on a on a positive note as well. Uh, we did, many years ago, increase the level of our reserves as required, our policies from a from, uh, considerably lower level than the 16% that we have in our financial policies now. That is why we're weathering, able to weather the storms we've been able to weather. Uh, this goes back 13 years now. Um, it was hard fought to get to that level of 16%, and we've done a very good job of staying within our means that, with that regard and make sure we have a rainy day fund. Um, and balances to keep us going. The other thing I would say is a very a very positive thing. The questions that you all have raised tonight, which are very thoughtful, 
uh, illustrates to us that we need to continue to have uh, engagement and have education so people can understand the, the 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 subtleties of this budget. It's very complicated. There's not a lot of change, honestly, since the previous biennium. Honestly, as uh, sitting new in this chair, it, when Director Vaughn and Administrator Hill came to me and said, guess what? There's not a lot to that we can do. I mean, nothing really new. Uh, I was a little disappointed, but at the same time, the, the community uh, is expecting us to continue to look for places that we can economize and make things better. Operational efficiencies are a priority, hence the, the, the laser fiche. That is a very important investment in our future. There are some other operational efficiencies that we're looking for, and there are other places that we welcome suggestions for everyone um, on that regard. in that regard. Colleagues, any other final thoughts? And let's move on. We've had Chief Cowan waiting very patiently in the wings here. Hopefully he doesn't ask us for more money. Okay, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Director.